uh, thank you for everyone. Uh, I know it's late and the people are getting hungry. So I will try to be quick and straightforward. So let's get started. Uh, the outline here, uh, we will first give you a brief introduction of Big DL, and then I will cover two of the primary use cases. One is for speech recognition, the other is for object detection. I have been talking about Big DL the whole day in the demo booth, and uh, I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces here, so hope you get a more integrated session here. And uh, so let's get started. So where's the position of Big DL? Actually, it's in parallel with Spark ML Lab and GraphX and uh, secure all the components. And uh, you can build an ML pipeline on top of it. So internally, you can interact with ML Lab. So uh, we actually build a few applications combining Big DL and ML Lab. So that's the position of Big DL. And basically, we are impl implementing a lot of uh, deep learning functions. Uh, so you can just use the Big DL functions and the layers. It's just from another namespace. Sim uh, quite similar to Spark ML Lab. And uh, so the first thing, uh, so Big DL is a deep learning library on top of Apache Spark. So that means you can just run deep learning applications on your existing Spark clusters. Oh, sorry. Oh, is it automatically on? Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, so the second thing means it can interact with all the sub-components sub with Spark. Like you, you can uh, get your application behind the Spark streaming or CQ program, and you can also use all the feature transformers in Spark ML Lab. And uh, the other great thing is that we got MKL acceleration. So that means we can have your, well, at the core part of every deep learning application, there's a one operation called GEMM. That means multiplying to matrix. So basically, we can get a lot of acceleration for that uh, specific uh, uh, mathematic operation. So it can be accelerated a lot, actually, uh, in orders of magnitudes. So we can have comparable performance between GPU and the CPU architecture for deep learning applications. That's where the high performance of Big DL comes from. And also we made other improvement, like we improved the, uh, the parameter aggregation mechanism in Spark, so it can support larger models. And uh, currently, uh, we are supporting a lot of, uh, well, latest models for different deep learning applications, like AlexNet, Google Net, VGG for image classification, and faster RCCN and SSD for object detection, and Deep Speech too, actually for speech recognition. And we have some recommendation applications. We have Scala and Python interface, and certainly you can use Java. And the other great features, including like TensorBoard support, TensorBoard support, Notebook support, and the user can also load Cafe and Touch model. So about popularity, we got the support from all the primary cloud providers. And Big DL is getting more and more popular in the community. We hope uh, you can all, um, well, we welcome all the contribution from organizations or individual contributors. So the basic component for Big DL, uh, down there, we implemented a tensor. It's just a multi-dimensional array, like uh, an array in, uh, uh, in Python. And uh, basically, it need to support a multi-dimensional array. You know, we got a lot of batch operation in the deep learning uh, applications. And uh, we support generic data types. That means both double or flow type are supported. So you can tune that by according to the memory of your model. And uh, we got a lot of layers. So for those layers, we develop them end-to-end -end on Spark. So there's no bridge to any other like deep learning framework. So the whole thing is developed in Scala, and we provide Python interface. We provide 23 criterions, and uh, we got a lot of optimizer. Basically, everything you need for building a deep learning application. And uh, the basic idea of Big DL is actually quite uh, similar to other Spark program. Basically, we are just uh, providing a lot of deep learning functions uh, for you to uh, invoke in your Spark program. So on each worker, there will be a Spark, a Spark executor, and uh, there's a Spark task assigned to that, that executor. 
and uh, internally you are just invoking big DL library for your deep learning jobs. So uh, that's a general introduction for big DL. And uh, we already got keynote and the session covering that. So let's jump to the example. The deep speech tool for big DL. Uh, so first, the speech recognition. The task is simple, just convert audio files to text and uh, many application scenarios, like converting uh, uh, phone, phone records, converting from audio files, or converting you know, uh, a lot of uh, films, and uh, uh, people are trying to convert the audios to text so they can make better index and the search of statistics from them. And uh, the difficult about it is that uh, well, people are speaking at different speed, different volume, and uh, uh, the, the position and uh, the different style of everyone speak is diff uh, is, uh, there's a, a lot of variability in that. And uh, most important, people are speaking different language. And uh, so we need to find a unified model that can support a lot of different language. Actually, I think uh, there's more Chinese speaker in the world, the English speaker. And uh, OK, so the solution. Uh, traditionally, uh, people are using a hybrid system for it. So it's kind of a uh, very complex the system, and uh, you need to include different uh, techniques for different parts. Basically, a multi-stage training process, and uh, uh, if it you know, combines everything and it finally works, that means just uh, your prayer is heard by God. And uh, uh, when it comes to around, uh, well, th actually the DN is applied to speech recognition around 2000 or earlier, but uh, recently it got greatly improved because we got more training data and more great computing resources. So. Actually, now most of the people will use a DNN based framework. It's much easier to train, and you just build an end to end uh, pipeline for, for the whole thing to work. And uh, it, can, uh, it can also benefit from more training data. So, for like any other deep learning application, that means you got more data, you get a better model. So, we are introducing Deep Speech 2. Actually, it's a, a paper published by uh, Baidu. Baidu Library in Silicon Valley. And uh, we're introducing it because, while well, it's the uh, uh, most uh, popular deep, uh, speech recognition model right now. And uh, the good part about, his, uh, about it is that it's, it's exceeding the accuracy of uh, some human workers. So that means it can hear, it can listen to people as good as or even better than the human beings. That means they can convert your audios, uh, like my speech, to some text more accurately than people. Like here in the three out of the four tested data site, so uh, the DS2 model is, uh, in three of them, is, uh, uh, well, uh, doing a better job than a human. So that's why we recommend this model. And uh, the whole pipeline is here. Actually, we get the raw audio, uh, the, here, the, yeah, can you see my mouse? No. OK, just uh, the picture on the right uh, from the raw audio files. We do the first step is called feature extraction. There we build a lot of, uh, actually, several transformers, like a window segmenter and the spectrogram and the mail filter bank to get uh, uh, the feature you need. And uh, after the feature extraction, actually, you get a data frame, so uh, the data frame in Spark. And uh, then we build a DNN model using big DL. After that, the DNN model will output the probability. Of, it's a probability distribution of uh, over your alpha bad characters. So you can know at which time step, uh, at, at a time step, which character is the most uh, pos possible that uh, the speaker is saying. And uh, in the decoder, uh, we take the probability distribution and combine with the language model. Uh, language model is not necessary here, but it can help uh, to improve the accuracy of your decoder. And finally, you got your sentences. So that's the whole pipeline, pretty much similar to any other machine learning applications. So about the pipeline, okay, this is a 
the feature transformer part. So basically, we build this uh, several things on Spark using the ML pipeline pattern. Basically, we are just uh, implementing those functions in Spark transformers. So we have implemented like a WAFL decoder and segmenter, windower. Windower just means we need to split you know, those uh, small audio files, uh, the, the audio files into some small overlapping pieces. So we can, uh, we can interpret each small pieces to see which phonome or uh, lexicon that part is saying. And then we will further extract some, well, acoustic features from it. That's what the DFT spectrogram and the mild frequency filter bank is doing. And another thing we need to, to transcript, uh, to, to transfer your, uh, to, to transform your uh, transcript, that's our label data for training a deep speech model. So that's all the, pre the processors we need. And uh, we have everything public available. I will uh, show, the uh, show the link at the end of the session. So everything here is, uh, open sourced. Okay, so here that's a model. So basically, deep speech model contains a lot of bidirectional RNN layers. So from the data frame there, we got from the feature extractors. We send, uh, we build a model contains well first the convolution layer, and then several layers of bidirectional RNN layers, so recurrent neural network, and uh, then several full connection layers and some loss function. That's the CTC loss function. I will give a detailed, detailed introduction later. So that's a whole uh, model for it. And uh, on the latter part is the code that we use to build this model. There are some details missing from this uh, code, like uh, the dimension of the data, but uh, it helps you to get a general idea. Uh, if you are interested, I can show you, uh, I can connect to my desktop and show you the actual code. Uh, but it's, uh, again, it's open source. And uh, if with nine layers of bidirectional RNN layer, we got more than 50 million parameters. So the model is pretty large and it's co pretty computing expensive. And about CTC loss. So basically, uh, in speech recognition, we need to uh, figure out a way to uh, make a, a match you know, between the speech audios and your uh, transcript. Like an example in the right corner. So suppose you are given an audio file, you need to know which part is corresponding to the word big DL and the help users and the rest of the part. So you need, you need to cut the audio files. But uh, that, is, that thing is uh, almost impossible with, uh, because it needs human uh, well, you need human labeling, and that's not an easy thing to do, especially you got, when you've got a large data site. So here, uh, in 2006, Alex Groves and his colleagues bring out a, a new function called CTC, Connectionist Temporal Classification. So it can help you to make the alignment between your audio files and the transcript. So it can match uh, map from the raw waveforms to the text transcription. And so that makes it a necessary step to use CNN to finish the end-to-end -end training. And uh, in Big DL, we developed the first open source CTC in Java and Scala. So it can help a lot, it, it can help in a lot of, of applications. Uh, basically a lot of sequence to sequence training process like uh, translation and certainly uh, this one, speech recognition. And uh, uh, we compare it uh, so with Baidu's version. It's also another implement, popular implement, implementation for CTC. It's called Baidu's WAP CTC. And uh, we got the s same loss and gradient. So the accuracy is uh, guaranteed. Uh, and uh, we found the performance. So Baidu's uh, WAP CTC is written in C++ most. And, uh, uh, after test, we find you know if you are using JNI to call Baidu's version, it will be three times faster than our Scala version. But uh, the CTC, uh, as our test, only takes about uh, uh, well, uh, 0 0.2 second uh, of the whole training time. So even if you, no matter how you optimize your CTC function, you cannot uh, 
observe any uh, improvement in your training process. So about the training time. Uh, for the deep speech model, most of the training time are spent for the recurrent layers. And uh, like uh, we only use one layer of convolution. So basically convolution takes nothing in the whole uh, training time. And so to speed up this uh, training process, the only thing we need to do is to speed up the recurrent process. And uh, for the recurrent process, uh, Actually, internally, it's just a lot of GEMM operations multiplying two matrix. So that's why uh, Intel MKL can give you a great help here and give you a much shorter training time. And this number is taken with uh, five uh, RN layers and uh, uh, on three epochs of the full training data. Okay, so next thing you need to uh, uh, as I mentioned, is a decoder. So, so far, uh, the, the, decode, the task of the de decoder is to you know, just uh, get the sentence from the probability distribution, like a map in here. So for the first time step T1, I got the letter D that has the highest probability. probability. So I can just extract the letter D. And uh, so similarly, I can get the character blank and A and B. So after some pro uh, further process, I can just get the final sentence. So that's one way to do it. That's the most simple way. It's called best pass decoder. And with that, you got a WER. WER means word error rate. And uh, that's a evaluation, bench, uh, evaluation method for the matrix for the uh, accuracy of your speech recognition model. And with the best pass decoder, we got a 27% uh, word error rate. And if you improve it with a vocab decoder, that means you can, however, compare your output sentence with some vocab vocabulary and make sure each word can find its most similar word in that vocabulary, you can get a better output sentence. So that can improve your word error rate by 5%. And we are also developing some beam search and the language model based decoder. And your contribution are also welcome. So here's some uh, results that we trained with uh, Deep Speech 2 model on Big DL. And with AN4 data set, it's a smaller data set that contains about 1,000 uh, audio files. And uh, people use it a lot in some uh, deep speech models because it's relatively quick to train and you can get your uh, result pretty fast. So for BDL, we got uh, uh, less than 5% error rate on that data site. Well, some other implementation like uh, DPC speech tool, you can, you can Google it, uh, DPC tool on TensorFlow, there's an open source implementation and we can get a better result. So, and uh, another much larger data set is Libre Speech. It contains like more than 1,000 hours training data. And uh, we use a holdout validation data set. And here's the result compared to other, uh, well, recent research results for the speech recognition. So the big DL model can get a result as good as any other method. So that means we are doing something reasonable, we are giving you the correct implementation for a speech recognition model. Certainly the whole thing is still under further uh, tuning and optimization. Uh, we are training with more training data. You know, the DB speech tool, it gets a better result than human workers because they have more training data. They compose the several public library, several, several public training data, like, uh, uh, oh, a lot more. Uh, training data, like several thousand of hours training data, so they can get a better speech recognition model. And the next thing, we are tuning for some better optimizer. Actually, in our training, we find that Adam, the Adam optimizer often, often uh, behaves better than the SGD optimizer. So we suggest you, if you are doing the same thing, you can start with your Adam process, uh, uh, optimizer, and then uh, you can use it to help you to find the best learning rate for SGD optimizer. So, summary. 
uh, we basically build the whole thing on Spark ML pipeline, and uh, we build the feature transformers, and we build the model with BigDL. And uh, in BigDL, we also implemented, implemented the CTC function, decoder, evaluation. So here you got your whole pipeline for building a speech recognition system. And uh, OK, that's for speech recognition. The other thing is called object detection. So the basic target for speech uh, for object detection is just uh, finding objects in pictures. Like uh, here, uh, different from image classification, you don't uh, only need to tell what an object is, you need also to locate it on the image. So here we can detect a person here, and we need to uh, categorize, you know, uh, give it a correct classification to tell that it is a person. And for those birds, we need to also tell that's birds. And uh, same for the bicycle and the person below. And we are introducing SSD. So SSD is also, uh, well, it is also the latest and uh, so far we think the best uh, approach for doing the object detection. Uh, we get it uh, one side from the research field and the other side from the industry application. More and pe more people are trying SSD. So what's SSD? It's a single shot detector. Basically, this is a whole complex the deep learning framework. And uh, the basic idea for object detection is that, uh, uh, well, here, you need first to find some region where an object is possibly at and then you run some classification network to help you, to tell you what that object might be. So two steps, one is region proposal. That means draw a block, you know, a rectangle on the picture, and then tell, the second step is to tell you what it is. So that's a general idea and the most intuitive way. But SSD actually improves it by removing the regional this, uh, proposal part. Actually, it, it is combining the region proposal and the afterwards network together. And the whole thing just runs much more faster and because it's a single pipeline. And another thing great about SSD is that uh, it can do detection on multiple scale of the convolution. So it is better at identifying some smaller objects. And the SSD is pretty faster. Uh, then if you know if you are familiar with the budget detection like a uh, faster RCN, we also support the faster RCN for uh, prediction, but uh, currently a lot of people is using SSD. And uh, this is the whole pipeline. Basically, we got the pre-precise step, and we use big DL as uh, the model part, and there's some post-processor. So the whole thing is pretty similar. Again, we build this in with BigDL and Spark MRLab. Okay, and now the result part. This is uh, uh, the most popular data site for object detection, and uh, we are getting a uh, similar result to any other implementation. So this is, this is on a larger data site with a uh, 512 dimension. Okay, so that's the whole idea. The two models I mentioned, deep speech and uh, object detection SSD, they are available at the first link there, Intel Analytics 2. And uh, you are welcome to join our mail list uh, to ask a question and get support. Okay, so that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Let me know. Uh, question time? Yeah. We've got uh, five minutes for questions, so just put your hand up, and uh, I'll come around to you. Hi. Hi. Two questions. Uh, I would like to know if uh, Brazilian Portuguese language is included uh, in the speech recognition function, and if not, uh, is possible to add a new language into that library? Mm -hmm. uh, you mean how it supports a new language? Or yeah, my first question is, uh, Oh, the fine tuning part? Uh, yeah, uh, speech recognition function. I would like to know okay. if uh, the Portuguese language is included or is supported in the speech recognition function. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure if 
I understand you correctly, but uh, about fine tuning, uh, we can. I can try to. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think the question is, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, you've mentioned like a lot of different languages, like either you know, uh, both like Chinese, Mandarin, and uh -huh. English. Does this also support uh, the Portuguese language, or would you have to fine tune anything uh, to make oh, it support actually, any kind of language? You know, for different language, you just use a similar deep learning framework, uh, the similar architecture. Both starts with a CN and a lot of bidirectional RNs. The major difference is first you got to feed the model with different training data. Like for English, you feed English data. For Chinese, you feed Chinese data. And the other important thing is at the decoder part. Because while Chinese is different from English, it's a character-based language. So the alpha byte is much larger than the Chinese one. So you got to maybe you need some further optimization on that part. Please put up your hand. Oh, there it is. I'll get back. I'll come back to you. Uh, <laughs> how do you handle gradients? And also, could you maybe just talk a little bit about the roadmap and what additional functionality you're planning on adding? The gradients and uh, what's the second question? Uh, just like a broad roadmap of what additional functionality is planned, I guess, to, to add into this framework. OK, <laughs> cool. Uh, how we handle the gradients? Uh, I'm not sure if you are familiar with Spark uh, MRLab. Basically, it's the same way we compute the gradients on each worker, and then we will aggregate all the gradients together uh, to the driver. But uh, in that part, we made a lot of optimization because we found, well, internally, if you are using the tree aggregate from Spark MR Lab, it will create some shuffle, and we will try to avoid that. And uh, there's some more details, like we are trying to convert the block manager in Spark to a parameter server. Uh, so there's a lot of details to it, and we can think of lie about it. And the second thing about uh, the feature. Actually, uh, we, we already got uh, several sessions covering that, but I'd like to mention that again. So as I know, the feature we are working on, including, well, the TensorPod and Notebook support, and uh, we are working also working on TensorFlow support so people can use, uh, can load TensorFlow models. And uh, some latest feature, including like uh, 3D convolution and uh, I'm not sure if I miss anything. Uh, uh, we are definitely trying to tune more and more models, like uh, uh, for machine translation or some deeper neural network, like uh, even rice night sometime. Uh, did you? Oh, this thing just went down. OK. So my question is, um, how easy is it to fine tune? OK. Fine tune your uh, deep learning uh, speech model to specific domain. Okay, uh, actually the fine tuning is pretty much quite natural. You just uh, load a model, right? And uh, we have a, you already have a Spark transformer wrapping it, so you can just uh, load that model, and uh, that's a step in your pipeline. And next, you can just uh, create another estimator, and you create some big DL layers in it create whatever layers, like uh, several full connection layers, and you just uh, call the fit method for that estimator. So it will keep the first part, you know, all the loaded model, the parameters steady, and it will just uh, tune the second part of your uh, new layers. So, you, yeah, so fine tuning works one, just one like in any other libraries? I'm sorry? It works as in any other libraries. It sounds like, okay. yeah, easy. Thank you. All right, I think we've got time for, for one more here. Well, perfect, because I'm actually on the yeah, big deal team. I just wanted to uh, announce that we have a promotion that we're doing to uh, give you an opportunity to try big oh. deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I hope you don't mind I, I share this. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that, you can come up and talk to one of us, or you can also find it online. If you go to the URL that um, was shown there, uh, software.intel.com slash big DL, you scroll down, there's a link there to uh, submit and uh, request uh, the promotion. But basically, we're paying for your compute in the cloud. So 
uh, if you want to try a big deal. And the reason why we're doing this is we really want to engage with you because we've been doing this now for six months. We've got uh, a lot of users, but we want to get more feedback from the users to know how uh, we can better support you. So um, we just want to give something in return for your effort to help us. Yeah. Sorry. Actually, we are collaborating with uh, a lot of top companies in different uh, industries on their like, uh, uh, products, like their applications for like, speech recognition and even fraud detection. So uh, you can feel free to contact us, and we can give you uh, some kind of support. Thank you, Yuhao, and uh, thank, thank you. you, Intel. Uh, please give a round of applause.